Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Hell Money Podcast. My name is Jesus Rotomore. Our host tonight is Aaron Red Wing. You don't even know my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for thank you for joining us. Uh, I feel like we need to shout out our patrons on oh, every yeah. episode. That's yeah, like we mandatory. We love our patrons so dearly. Yep. We couldn't do it without you. We could. We literally could. We would be. <laughs> I'd be out of here. I'd be like Aaron. Would be like, you want to record an episode of the podcast? I'd be like, fuck no. Like, I think the main thing is that we just couldn't uh, pay our editor. Which that's would, right. Like if if I had to edit these episodes, they wouldn't happen. <clears throat> no, yeah. Do you think it's you that would be out? But it'd be me. Yeah, it'd be both of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you you keep the the wheels turning. And also, uh, I, we were invited by uh, Patreon to visit their headquarters. Oh yeah, how was that? <laughs> uh, it was like the <laughs> the biggest nerds you could possibly imagine. Uh, were there was, a lot of girls or no? Because that's what I would expect. Yeah, it was maybe fifty fifty. The gender ratio was maybe fifty for a San Francisco event. Yeah, I know that's, that's true. unheard of. Yep. Uh, my favorite guy there was um, somebody who had a Patreon, which is entirely uh, kink and recreational hypnotism. That's awesome. Yeah. And I looked at, I looked at a YouTube video that he had. You and watched his videos. I watched I. his videos. I'm a fan. <laughs> You're, you are now a patron. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but he has a video that has like 65 million views on YouTube. What is it? It's just like some hypnosis video with no video of him. It's just like literally like a spiral mm -hmm. and it's some nerdy guy talking over it. What's the kink? Like, what are the kinks? I, I, I think this, I don't think this one was a kink. I think it was just like hypnosis. Yeah. Like you, you, you but what, I like fall asleep hypnosis. What is kink hi hypnosis? Like, kink hypnosis is like, Oh, you're like a sissy boy. And like, how is you're it turning hypnosis? into a sissy? Oh, it, it's second person. Second person is what makes things hypnosis. So it's the fact that they're like, you are a sissy. You mm -hmm. are a, like it. Yeah. So it's ingraining your kink even deeper. I, like you're I, like, I need, I'm not an I need expert someone here. who's making videos that makes me more embedded in my kink. I, That's I, the idea? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I'm not an erotic kink uh, enthusiast. That was a lie. Because there's definitely like, there's a huge contingency of like Twitter, or no, sorry, TikTok guys who have sexy voices mm -hmm. and then they'll this like, this guy does not have a sexy that's voice. That's what's interesting to me is like, yeah. you'd think you'd need a sexy voice. You do not. Right. Like, but cause I think that's like the most popular. Well, I mean, I'm just I, like, I don't actually know that this is true, but like, I feel like men with sexy voices, like reading romance novels aloud is like a very obvious niche to mm -hmm. hit as like a, Yep. only fans equivalent for men. Yep. You know, women are not visual creatures in the same way. They, yep. they just want to hear like the deep British accent reading twilight to them. Right. Yep. But it doesn't really sound like this is the guy that you met. No, but good for him. Good I for mean, him. he figured out his niche. Yep. Honestly, like our niche probably sounds as stupid to him yep. as they gave us a, a little card, like with our three like areas of improvement. Wait, um, what did they say? <laughs> let me stop recording and just go into my photos. Um, <laughs> Keep recording. Show them your photos. <laughs> my photos, yeah. Uh, oh, did I? Oh, yeah, there we go. So our marketing is exceptional. What does that even mean? Uh, I think that the, these are the three parts Patrick's of the funnel. It's marketing, conversion, and retention. So marketing is like how many people can you drive to your Patreon? Conversion is how many people can you convert to actually signing up to your Patreon? Mm. And retention is once they've signed up, how do they say signed up? Probably because so we don't. Our marketing is great. Yeah, our retention is okay. It's healthy. Opportunity area. And our conversion is an opportunity area. Healthy. It's said healthy. Oh, no, no. Yeah, retention is healthy. Yep. Conversion That's interesting. I wouldn't think our retention is that healthy, but, you know, yep. teach their own. I mean, conversion makes sense because. Well, I think, I think it actually points to the fact that retention um, for the average Patreon, there's much more churn than ours. That yeah. they, like, lose 50% of their members, like, a month after they sign up. Yeah, that's probably. Something like that. We're in the, wait, top percentile of creators. Like, what percentile? That's right. Top 1%. Stop. Yeah. Really? Oh, easily. Can't you like, of course. Yeah. Like, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Makes I sense. mean, just because the vast majority of creators like not, don't, don't yeah. earn anything. So we're in the top 1%. Of <laughs> <laughs> we're just reporting our success. That's the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Thanks Get guys. Fucked. Get Thanks, guys. fucked. 99% of other <laughs> Patreon creators. <laughs> I mean, I could see how we definitely have an opportunity for conversion because we like you sign up for a tier and you get the same thing. Yep. As yep. far as Patreon Well, and goes. also you sign up for the Patreon and you don't get a lot. Let's be real. Like you get the episode like slightly early. I mean, yet. We could make the episode. We could have an, a longer Patreon exclusivity period. We could have like a one week no, Patreon exclusivity period. We don't period. post enough. I mean, Casey, I feel like we should start hinting. <laughs> at what? What? At hinting at what? I don't want to say. <laughs> hinting at 
the th- same thing that we we're hinting at when we created the Stardew Farm named Rune Drop Farms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, there might be conversion opportunities that don't exist within the Patreon platform itself. That's right. It's possible that if you're signed up, there might be there some might be sort other of, things we might come get. up with some sort of bonus. Yeah. You know, we might, you know, yeah. you never know. You never know. So anyway, thanks to our patrons. We love you guys dearly. Yep. Um, what else? We have another update, right? Some current events news. Oh to yeah, cover. right. Let me uh, let me start recording again. Okay. Um, and actually, let me. I have to go. Okay. Anyways, yeah. This is my alt, uh, Orpheus Orifice. Um, it, it wrote haiku uh, like every ten minutes or every day or something for a long time. They're really bad. The haiku is really really bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're not good. Oh, but it's already docs in the sense that it's rotomore.com slash orifice. Yeah, you can you can see it. Yeah. So you know. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's go to mononautical mononaut, um, mononaut, mononaut has an amazing account. Uh, one of the best accounts for like deep dives into the mempool and Bitcoin and transaction types and also new features for mempool.space. I think he works on mempool.space pretty sure. Yeah. Right. I thought he created it. Maybe I'm just giving him the credit because I just mononaut created mempool.space. You heard it here. here, Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, so it's interesting. We've had relatively low, um, fee rates in the mempool, but it's still about a hundred blocks deep. Um, and what that means is just like, there's all like what it's probably at like three sats per V byte about like last I checked, it was around there. So go check it out. So yeah, if the fee rate is right now, let's see if it's three, four sats, five. Yeah. No, it's, it's like around three is two sats per V byte and then five. Yep. So yeah, okay. Let's let's say that the the mempool is like approximately three to five sats per v byte. There's all these things that are sitting there at like one sats per v byte, two sats per v byte, and like yeah. they can be sitting there since forever, right? Yeah, we have a hundred blocks of um, transactions, which is kind of insane. I mean, it's insane that we have low transaction fees and then a huge backlog. I think this might kind of be the state of the world from now on. Um, it kind of used to be that. Um, fees would get low and then the mempool would, would clear. Um, but if you look at the, at the, um, at the graph of the mempool, you can see that like, okay, we have been slowly churning through these like fees, these, these transactions, but it kind of doesn't look like it's continuing. It kind of looks like we've gotten down to the one sat per V byte band and we just see like, you know, transactions continue to appear. Like we're stuck at that level. I think maybe part of this is that, runes inscriptions brc20 they create this like permanent backlog Mm -hmm. of transactions that people would like to make unlike bitcoin itself where i don't think that there is that permanent backlog no you don't want to be like hey i'll pay you once the mempool is chilled or you don't just like you're not like oh it's cheap let let me move my bitcoin from one wallet to another like whatever yeah Yeah, actually i mean i guess what we're looking at so i assume this is like the happening right like right around here uh, yeah, I think that's right. That's yeah, the happening. So this is the happening. And then so you see all is these that like April. Is that the happening? Yeah. April yeah. 19th. Okay, 20th. Yeah. yeah. So like in here, so there was like kind of high fees leading up and then I assume this was the happening. Yeah. This right? is the happening. And this was like some exchange fucked up their consolidations. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So you get these like, but then you can see like the underlying, like, like the pink zone of this is just like, you this have is that one sat per V byte transactions. Yeah. And yeah. that's, we're now starting to like clear those. So that's what Mononaut is basically looking at. in yep. these, these tweets it's like what's left. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's really interesting. So here's the color coded, um, here's the color coded, um, sort of like transactions. So the, uh, the purple transactions, Wait, but this, so this is the, that's the current. Oh yeah. Sorry. This is the current block that's about to be mined. Mm-hmm. And then going from left to right and or right to left and top to bottom. These are the things that would be mined if like the current block got immediately mined and then a hundred more blocks got immediately mined. So why do you have like these empty blocks right after these are not empty. So actually if you zoom in, you can see those are just small transactions. These are all rune mints. Are they the uncommon goods? They're, these are uncommon goods mints. That's right. Yeah. And, and Mononaut made the observation that when these clear, they're replaced by more. Oh. Yeah. So, so it's not just like these get mined and they go away. It's like now it looks like at the top of the, at the top of the bottom of the mempool, we have like sustained demand for uncommon goods. You can see. Mints. Yeah. If you like actually zoom in, you can see all the tiny transactions yep. in here. It's not actually blank. Exactly. So yeah. basically you have. So I wonder, will anything then be cleared under that? If that's, there's, I mean, at some that's, point, that's kind of what I'm saying. That's kind of what I'm saying about this graph is that it's like we have this like downward curve when we get downward slope when we get to one sat per V byte, but then it looks like it's kind of like 
stopped out it's there. It's just gonna Yeah, and it yeah. might be that people will just continue like putting in their their one sat per V byte uncommon goods mints. I mean I think this is like it is kind of the the thesis of like runes, inscriptions, whatever, kind of like providing this baseline playing out nicely where yep. like yep. you know a lot of maxis were pissed off because they were like, now the fees are gonna be 30 to 50 sats per V byte anytime mm-hmm. that I want to send one of my Bitcoin transactions to buy coffee at a cafe yep. in Africa. Yep. But like in actuality, it's just like providing this baseline, maybe yep. like where the market decides it should be, which is probably not 30 sats per V byte. Yeah, exactly. So yep. there's all these uncommon goods or whatever mints that mm-hmm. are in like the next couple blocks. So they're probably at like what, two ish? I think they're probably at like 1.1 1. 1 sat per V byte yeah. or like, you know, whatever, just enough to put whatever them over it is the to threshold. get above the, the vast the, bulk of, of all this trash. Yeah. I wonder who, like truly who is the uncommon goods whale? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I really need to post an address and just beg people to send me some uncommon good so i have some i really want to do like i mean i've been talking i want to do an ordinals poker uh-uh. something because oh, yeah. i learned to play poker in bali okay and i love it because it's like okay. a combination of strategy and social uh-huh. like i mean ov- that's probably apparent to everyone but i just hadn't really played it before oh yeah yeah it's all str- it's like the strategy part like if if you have perfect play in the sense of not taking into account like what other people think but just like playing with perfect strategy like stats, basically. Yeah. But, but, but not taking into account the social aspect. Yeah. You like will not just, do, you will not do very well. Yeah. And, and re and they, they've started making bots that play poker very well, but they, those bots take advantage of what other people think and those expectations yeah. and they perform much better than bots that don't. But yeah. So I was like, well, maybe we could do like an ordinals, like uncommon goods poker night. I mean, that would be sick. I want to do a poker tournament where you have to buy in with uncommon goods yeah. and the pot is uncommon goods. Yeah. I think we should do it in Vegas. Yep. I think it'd be really fun. Uh, you know, more on that later, yep. but, um, yeah. So, I mean, in that case, whoever's the uncommon goods whale can provide liquidity to the ordinals poker night. Yep. That's the yep. utility. <laughs> um, and then looking at some other things, let's look at these. Wait. So yeah, actually we didn't talk about the colors. So the, yeah. Yeah. So orange, which you can see here, the little ones, it's really hard to tell cause they're small, but these are runes mints. So you can see not a ton. It looks like we have one, two, three, and then maybe some here. So like maybe like five or six blocks total of, mm-hmm. of runes mints. Um, for the, the blue, the blue are just normal consolidation transactions, like people yeah. doing like Bitcoin consolidation transactions. Mm-hmm. The yellow are inscriptions. So we actually have a kind of healthy amount of inscriptions in the mempool. We've got like, you know, five blocks, eight blocks, 10 blocks of inscriptions, maybe all told waiting. They're, they're wait- going to be waiting for a while. Like it looks like these are probably pretty old. Like yeah. I'm, I'm guessing nobody put these in recently. They'll just be happy someday when they're like, oh my God, I yep. got to inscribe finally. Or they'll have <laughs> lost their wallet and you yeah. know, their epic inscriptions are gone. <laughs> well, it's still on the digital megalith. Yep. Yeah, that's true. You know, yep. um, and then um, obviously we have these uh, purple transactions. That's pink. Pink. Fuchsia. That is not It's purple. fuchsia. It's not, it's not, it's not pink. It's, it's not, not pink. purple. It's fuchsia. I'll say that. It's like fuchsia. It's like hot pink. It's like a watermelon pink. Fuchsia is also still pink, I would say. It's fuchsia. It is like definitionally fuchsia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and fuchsia <laughs> is pink purple. <laughs> Not to, you know. I would say it's a warm, it's a warm fuchsia. Okay, it's a warm fuchsia. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Hot fuchsia. Let's go with hot fuchsia. Um, so all of these hot fuchsia transactions, these are actually all um, consolidations of the output of BRC20 mints. So they're consolidating their UTXOs yep, from BRC20 cons- mints. Yep. And, and this is one of the, so the reason that these consolidations happen is because when you do BRC20 mints, you wind up with a lot of outputs, um, but those outputs don't actually contain the BRC20 tokens because BRC20 is an account based system. So let's say you go and you mint some SATS token, some SATS BRC20, that token the tokens that you mint are credited to your address, which is your like account, but they don't actually sit in the UTXO that was created by the transaction that Mm. minted those, those tokens. This is where I'm confused because I thought it was that like you make the inscription, Mm -hmm. right? Like you, you mint the BRC 20 and it's inscription. Then you have to transfer the inscription around. You do, but you only have to, the, the, the transfer, the inscription only matters for the first hop. So you create this like mint transaction, you transfer it, and then the the address that that transaction winds up that that, that inscription winds up in is credited, let's say, ten Sats tokens. Mm-hmm. But then, in order to move those ten Sats tokens in the future, the address does not actually have to like move that UTXO. 
that was created. But what about the inscription itself? It's garbage. It, it doesn't contain the token. So then when you send, so you say like my address, let's say you have one address that mints yep. and you send it to another address. Yep. You send the inscription yep. to another address. How do you then send from that address to another address? You create a new inscription. Okay. So it's a totally fresh, inscription. totally fresh. So inscription. then that inscription from before is now garbage. Exactly. So that's yep. what's being consolidated here is basically like, imagine that you're moving a BRC 20 around you know, you're trading it. Basically yep. <clears throat> you're, you're moving it from one address to another, mm -hmm. to another, to another. You're left essentially with each step of a dust UTXO, which is an inscription. Exactly. Yep. And so that's what these people are doing yep. or I, it's so maybe, so it could be, I mean, we were talking about this before we recorded and you were like, Oh, this is probably like an exchange or something. Yeah. I, I, then it could be right. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that these are users. I don't know if user, if like, any services. This is something I'm curious about. So me and Aaron talked about this before the episode. I, I said, oh, these are probably like exchanges or like big minters who have done this and wound up with wallets that they control that have a ton of these garbage UTXOs. Um, but it's also possible that there are services out there where users are given the option to like consolidate their UTXOs. Yeah. And I'm kind of curious which it is. Like, are these just exchanges or are these... Um, users that have access to the tools that allow them to consolidate their garbage UTXOs. I would say it's probably a combination, but it, it's probably mostly either an exchange or like a big <clears throat> player or something. That's what I think. Right. Yeah. Like someone who's offering this as a cert, like, it, cause if you're trying to trade your BRC 20, mm -hmm. then like the exchange or the whoever has to like make that new, you, I guess you don't send them the inscription though. This is where I'm getting like caught up where yeah, it's like, yeah, the, the inscription is created. Yeah. When the inscription is created, like before it moves, it, you know, morally contains the BRC20 tokens, mm -hmm. but then it's transferred and the address that it's transferred to that address, not that output is credited with those tokens and the inscription like no longer contains them. It's like a, a vessel that moves them across one hop. But after that one hop, it's empty of the BRC20 tokens. So this tokens. is where I don't understand is like, I don't think it would be, I don't, from my understanding is like none of these exchanges are really like custodial in the sense that like, okay, you know, you're trading, mm -hmm. you're selling your BRC 20 for some amount of Bitcoin that that new inscription that is the transfer inscription mm -hmm. is then moving to some other user's wallet. Yeah. Or it's not moving into the exchange. Or for example, what this could be is that if you have a non-custodial wallet where you control the UTXOs and you want to transfer your BRC 20 tokens, you will have to create an inscription and send it to the exchange. So these could be the result of people transferring their inscriptions to exchanges. The mm. exchanges then hold all these garbage UTXOs and the exchanges consolidate them. Yeah. Even if the users like never consolidate. Yeah. I mean, also actually what this makes me think of is I don't think that I'm pretty sure block space media already broke this. I don't know if anyone literally cares, but I guess like Unisat was like minting sats in addition to all of their VRC 20 yep. mints or something. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't take me as the news source. Just go to Blockspace Media Aaron's, and ask Aaron's them. Aaron's true. It's everything she says everything is true. Everything I say is true. Um, but I guess like Unisat was minting sats yep. whenever anyone was sending or like minting some other token on their platform. Mm -hmm. So this could be like Unisat or something that now has all of these sats inscriptions that could, they, they've they consolidated be. and they don't need this yeah. anymore. Although actually like what I just said, I actually think that's really likely. Like anytime a user transfers tokens to an exchange to sell, they're going to create a new inscription UTXO that's then after the transaction going to be owned by the exchange. I, this is where I, I think I'm confused because I thought that it would just go directly to the person that you're selling it to. Uh, let, but let's say they want to sell on an exchange. Isn't that still just you're selling to someone else's address? Like you're aren't, not. Aren't there aren't there aren't there custodial exchanges where you transfer BRC twenty tokens onto the exchange, like Coinbase? You know, where you send your tokens to the exchange. On the exchange, you sell them to another user. But all that happens oh, within the maybe, exchange. Maybe yeah, because I guess Coinbase would be like Coinbase has listed like I think already in Sats, right? No, Coinbase doesn't. Or Binance maybe. Bi Binance. Binance listed. Binance one of them. listed yeah. Maybe both of them. Yeah, this could be Binance consolidating so it could be Binance. all their junk. Yeah, because yeah. I think I don't think Unisat is works that way, but certainly Binance yeah. does. So this could be Binance. And yeah. wasn't Binance the one who had the crazy like fuck up uh, fee transaction from June or whatever? I do not remember. I thought it was yeah, them. Could be. But in any case, let us know if you yep. know any more tea about this. But it's I mean, what's the lesson here? Well, so the lesson here is that um, uh, 
BRC20 is really wasteful because BRC20 is sort of a combination of the UTXO model and the account model in the sense that you have to create UTXOs to do anything you want. But then after you create those UTXOs, after you do those operations, the tokens are credited to your account. And those UTXOs that you created, that you created, you're not interested in them anymore because they're just these dust Bitcoin UTXOs. Um, and I asked Mononaut on, on Twitter and he sort of confirmed that like we don't see this with runes mints because when you create when you mint a rune, the U your runes are in the UTXO that is created. They're always in a UTXO that you just create that you created. When you transfer them, you have to destroy that UTXO and create a new UTXO that creates that contains those um, tokens. And so you just don't see this kind of behavior. When people mint runes, what they wind up doing is they wind up consolidating as they go. They do some mint transactions, which create some outputs with runes. They consolidate those into another output that contains all the runes from those outputs. And they, they keep doing that going forward. So it's, for me, it's kind of nice uh, validation of my sort of idea that runes would wind up being less wasteful than BRC20. Yeah, I think I didn't really realize that. I mean, it makes sense when I think about <clears> it deeper, but I didn't really realize that every time that you... I, I thought of it like you make the inscription that is the BRC20 and then you have to transfer that inscription yeah. around so that like the, like it's worse than I thought, I guess is my point, because I thought it was just that it was creating all these inscriptions, AKA these like very small, you know, 546 sats, mm -hmm. like UTXOs or yep. outputs that then you can never, no matter how many BRC 20s you own, you can never like consolidate them to like one UTXO no. because they're the, all the, but it's not just that yeah. it's that you also have to make, a new, new ones and then whenever. you have a trash yep. utxo just sitting around yep. that you then have to consolidate in this way yep that's right yep so it's worse than than i thought yep but good confirmation of your thesis yep. this made me think a bit about like <laughs> i really wish that the bitcoin maxis would say some the toxic bitcoin net maxis would say some uh nice things about uh inscriptions uh and runes they're not sophisticated enough they're not but the thing is is that they always criticize they, they, you know, there's some valid criticisms of runes and uh, inscriptions, which is like, this is just garbage speculation. Like, this is like, uh, you know, a sideshow. Like, this is just bullshit. Um, that's, you know, maybe true, whatever. Yeah. But there's also all these other things that they complain about when they, when they look at some protocol, they'll complain that it's centralized, right? They'll go, oh, look at that protocol. It's not, cent it's, it's centralized. Well, guess what? Runes and inscriptions are totally fucking decentralized. They're as decentralized as Bitcoin. They've got like an open source implementation that like anybody can run with. And we also have the very same extremely conservative um, development style as Bitcoin Core. Maybe we're not as conservative just because, you know, we don't have our shit together as much. But, you know, we don't make um, non backwards compatible changes. We're in incredibly conservative with adding new functionality. So they, make all these criticisms of other things like, oh, it's, it's, it's centralized. It's complicated. The consensus is really bad. There's some like core token in the protocol, but then they don't acknowledge that like, okay, like maybe ordinals inscriptions and runes still, there are things that you can criticize, but Hey, look, it's a massive improvement on all these other things that you people have been talking about like forever. You've been complaining about X, Y, and Z, A, B, C, D forever and runes and inscriptions and, and ordinals are better for a b and c and like not as good as d and then you just like switch to like fully complaining about d and you like never mention a b and c again even though you know you had been complaining about them for a long time well some people don't really care about solutions they just want to complain with like-minded individuals which kind of gets us into our main topic that's of right the episode yeah. so yeah, which is alternative social media platform yeah so moving on from the the mempool uh checkup yeah uh, we're kind of done um uh, yeah Okay, so yeah, getting into the main topic of our episode, which we didn't say at the beginning, but yep. whatever. It's uh, we tried out alternative social media platforms. Yeah, alternative and decentralized social media. So what got me thinking about this is I have been like a Noster hater for a long time. Yep. And um, I've kind of been a low key Noster skeptic for a while as well. I've been like pretty low key about it too, I would say. But what's gotten me fired up like she's fired up people i'm fired up about it feminism was a mistake feminism was a mistake why why are we letting <laughs> why, women why get fired this, up about who noster is, who is that fired up woman <laughs> um what gets me annoyed about noster is that i think like there's no one has like a, a deep understanding of why they're on social media or why anyone would want to be on social media mm -hmm. 
And that's not to say people don't. Of course they do. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there's a reason why people check Twitter every single day. There's a reason why people post on some platforms and not others. Mm -hmm. But I think like in order to create a really good new social media platform that's going to compete in any way with the existing ones, you have to like actually think deeply about why anyone would want to use it. Mm -hmm. And my issue with Noster is that I feel like there's not that much thought put into why someone would benefit from posting their content there, for example, like for us posting our Hell Money episode there Mm -hmm. versus like just because it's on Bitcoin, you Mm -hmm. know? And I think like in general, I mean, the the sites that we're going to cover today are not all Bitcoin. They're mostly not Bitcoin because, but, but Noster was like the genesis of this idea Mm -hmm. um, is like, I think that a lot of people who build on Bitcoin, they, they in their own way, think that they're Satoshi. Mm. They think build it and they will come, Indeed, you know, and what I'm building, it must be as good as Bitcoin because it's on Bitcoin and I'm a Bitcoiner with Bitcoin ethics. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it will take over just like Bitcoin has taken over. And I think like the people that I, that have really tried to convince me about Noster, that's the perspective that they have Mm. is, well, someday everyone's going to want decentralized social media because question mark, you know, they just think like that, that will be a, a, decentralization is the goal for everything, just like Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, the, the sort of like ways that they couch that argument and like real arguments is like, oh, well just wait till you're censored off of Twitter and you have nowhere Mm -hmm. else to go. I mean, what am I posting on Twitter that I'm going to be censored for my astrological content? I mean, we're, we're always, you're always teetering on the edge. I'm always teetering on the edge. You should see my drafts. (laughs) Um, like it's like, yeah, it's this idea that like someday, you know, the, the social, social media censors will come for all of us. And so you better be on something like Noster as basically like a, like a, like a doomsday prep yep. for that, that moment. And they argue that that's why people have Bitcoin. Like, cause I've, I mean, I argued with someone about this when I was in Singapore, I won't name who Raf, um, <laughs> <laughs> kidding. He was like mostly just playing devil's advocate with me, but like, you know, this, this idea that like, like I was saying like, well, why would I need to do this? Like, I'll do that when I need to basically. Mm -hmm. And he was like, well, you sound like a fiat person talking about why Bitcoin isn't useful. Mm -hmm. And like, my thing is like, okay, maybe there is, you know, 0.1% of Bitcoin holders, users, whatever Mm -hmm. that are like true cypherpunks. And they're like into it because it's like cypherpunk. I would say 99.9% of the reason why people hold Bitcoin is because of the speculative Absolutely. value. Absolutely. 100%. Number go up, number there's, has gone up. And so they're interested in that. There's, there's ideological, um, you know, there's ideology contributes, yeah. you know, for example, like one of the reasons why I got interested in Bitcoin and got excited about Bitcoin was from an ideological perspective. But if I had still had that like ideological motivation, but Bitcoin was actually somehow this perf- perfect stable coin that never gained and lose va- lost value. I would not have like bought a bunch of Bitcoin and then become became uh, invested in its success. Yeah. Right. I would have been like, oh, this is cool. I hope eventually I can use it to make payments. But I wouldn't have been like, oh, shit, now I'm a bag holder. Like, I love this. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, I think people underestimate like that's a big reason why a lot of you are fucking maxis is because you think someday you're going to be rich. Yep. Okay. 100%. Like if you pretend that's not a reason, like I I've never met a person that didn't think that. Yep. And like, that's fine. That doesn't have to be your only and reason. And also that's why that's the fucking, that's the capitalism pill that yeah. like the reason capitalism works is because everybody is individually incentivized to do things that contribute to group success. Right. But, and it doesn't, you're not, it doesn't matter whether you're incentivized through some sort of noble you know, high minded goals or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. You're incentivized and then it leads to good things and that's great. And we shouldn't care about why people are incentivized. Well, I think you should care about why people are incentivized if your goal is to make a successful thing. And so you want to like align. What I mean is you want to care that people are incentivized, but yes. it doesn't matter if they're incentivized out of self-interest right or not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this is kind of the lens through which I think I'll basically be reviewing like all of these mm-hmm. is just that like, yeah, I think that there's, there's specific reasons why people participate in different mm-hmm. platforms. And I think that's a huge reason why something like TikTok is able to go from zero to the most used social media platform like in existence right now, because the incentives are really good to yep. use it. Yep. And, and like there's different incentives for users versus creators. Right. And like, I'm not saying that every platform has to be like TikTok, which 
TikTok's incentive is that its algorithm is incredible. Mm -hmm. And so as a creator, you can post something on there and it'll be seen by way more people than it would on literally every other social media platform, like yep. pretty much as a baseline. Which is interesting. I don't think that people appreciate this. Like no. when you are a small account on Twitter and you post some, something, nobody will see it. If you're a small account on TikTok and you post a video, the algorithm will experiment with showing that video to people. They'll kind of give you your fair shake at getting some engagement and reach. Like if you post, if you're a random account, you post a random video, you'll get like a hundred views, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's imp like, if someone's investing their time into creating, which like, I mean, you could say some social media platforms just exist for people to talk to their friends. Like mm -hmm. Facebook is like that, right? Yep. There are of course people that uh, view Facebook as like a platform on which to create, make money, whatever. Mm -hmm. But probably the majority of Facebook users are people that want to connect with like their friends, family, whatever. Yep that's one thing, you know, you can have like your, your social media platform that's just designed for like, this is a niche place to hang out with your friends. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. But at this point, people that are making high quality content, like putting effort and time into their content, like filming a podcast, editing it, writing a whole blog post, whatever mm -hmm. it is, they want payoff for that. They yep. want algorithmic reach. Yep. And so like, whatever, I mean, we should just get into reviewing these. Well, at this before point, we, but before like, we get into this, like, so it sounds like you're like sort of a top down hater. You know, you're like a big picture hater. Yes. So I want to contrast that with, I agree and contrast that with what kind of hater I am. So I'm actually a bottom up hater. <laughs> like I see these platforms and I see all these like weird paper cuts and like user experience failings. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it kind of doesn't matter. Well, to some extent, it, it doesn't matter how good the big picture is. Like you're not going to get people to do this shit. You're yeah. not going to get people to like manage their fucking keys and we'll go over the specifics, but like, listen, you can't have something that's like theoretically big picture better, but then have all these weird ass paper cuts that users are going to encounter when they actually try to use their shit. So 100%. I just want to, you know, underscore, we have sort of different approaches to why we, why our, our, our hater <laughs> attitudes. Yeah. And we're reviewing Noster, Farcaster, Urbit, Truth Social, yep. uh, and Blue Sky. We yep. didn't look at math. We thought about doing Mastodon. We didn't, we didn't do, do it, Mastodon. Right? Yep. So... We should get started. Let's yep. get into Noster since we're already kind of talking about it. Yep. So I, I will say let's, we, let's, we tried all of these. Let's talk about, yeah, we tried, we tried all, all of these yep. and we made accounts and we will be posting this episode on all of these. So we if we talk shit on your platform, but we're posting on your platform, hey, send us a <laughs> like. <laughs> Prove to us that yeah, there's right. some fucking incentive to be on your platform. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, we started with Noster. Mm -hmm. So Noster does not have a canonical app through which to engage with it, right? There's different... There's a bunch of different apps. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because, and correct me if I'm wrong, Noster is like an open source protocol. Mm -hmm. And then it's like ordinals, right? Where it's like you build this open source protocol for a social media network. And then there's different uh, companies, people, whatever, who have then built ways to access it Clients. or to use it. Yep. Right? Yep. Um. So which, which client did we use? We used Domus, Domus which, which is I think the best is client. the canonical yeah, one. It's the, it's the, it's an iOS client. Um, it's very polished, reasonably polished. People recommended polished. other ones, but Casey wouldn't use them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. So we use Domus. Yep. Um, <laughs> I mean, should we go through our list of complaints? Yeah. I mean, so this, the, the, a lot of this aligned with my bottom up haterdom. Yeah. Um, so like you can't delete a post like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, even if like, I understand sort of why, because, uh, Noster is a relay based system. And so when you create a post, you send it out to a relay and then other people download it locally. And so you can't force somebody else to download your, to delete a post. Um, right. They already have it. They already have a copy of it. It's an open source protocol. However, like I made some random shitty post as like the first post and I was like, oh, I should delete that and create a better post. And the other users, they don't benefit from seeing that crappy post. So there should be like delete functionality, even if it, even if you can still see it, even if like another user can be like, look at the deleted post from this account. Sometimes people delete posts because they're embarrassed of them and like you actually still want to see them. But other times people delete them because they're just crappy. Or there's a typo. Yeah, or there's a typo. Yeah. And so like those posts, most people would opt into those posts being hidden or those posts being in some sort of deleted posts feed for an account. So seems like, so this is the kind of thing where it's like these little like weird missing features that I'm like, okay, like why? I you mean, know? I can't imagine like, why from a user perspective would you ever want to be on Twitter where you can't delete your tweets? Right. Yeah. Like why? 
And and like I think there's this like a uh, cypherpunk like censorship perspective where they're like, well, we don't want all the people that were at the Diddy parties to be able to delete mm, right. the evidence. You can't okay, delete the baby but oil. that person as a user wants to do right. that. So yeah. it doesn't fucking matter what you as like a personal investigative reporter wants to do. Mm-hmm. Like it's about the users that are actually posting and creating value on the platform itself. Not yep. you as some like, you know, fucking cypherpunk observer. Yep. You yep. lurker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are other weird things like you can't add photos by yeah, default. Like it? I couldn't figure out the Domus app. Like it could sort of like pop up my photo library, but it couldn't actually select and like include one. How the fuck am I going to be on a platform where I can't post my GM selfies? I know. Yeah. What yeah. is the? <laughs> and I think this is because like relays aren't hosts by default, but I mean like the Domus app just needs to run an image host. Yeah. In order to have I mean, any crazy. sort of functionality. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, for some reason, the photos are blurred by default. Probably because you can post anything, right? Yeah. I, I wonder so if this is some weird like app store thing. Like the, the Apple app store is like, oh, if you can't like censor things, then they have to be blurred by default and people have to like opt into seeing them. Probably because I know Domus did have drama with <clears> the <throat> app yeah, store, right? So, and yep. the, the fact that they were on the app store was surprising to me. So I feel like that also, that, that my, my guess would be it's something like that where it's like yep. you you need to have some sort of filter on content yep. and image co- yep. like is probably the worst offender of yep. that. So, so yeah, when like literally our experience of like being on Damas was like scrolling and everything is just a blur and then you have to click in order to view the photo, which is insane. Yeah. It's also a ghost town. Like the yeah. people get no likes, their accounts just posting into the fucking void. But I think that's what Noster users kind of want in the sense that like, no, they don't. They want engagement. Everybody wants engagement. Everybody wants engagement. That's true. But I think like there's something, I mean, it's, it's the Bitcoin maxi platform, right? Like I think it's, it's a lot of people that really should just be in a group chat with each other. Yeah. And it is true that when you post like some fire message in the group chat, you do want people to flame react, mm-hmm. but it's like the important aspect is that like, it's just you and your friends yeah. in the group chat. So I yeah. feel like that's kind of who Nostra is appealing to. Yeah. And then what? We're just like sending sats back and forth amongst our friends. Yeah. Bitcoin circular economy. Yeah. yeah, The Bitcoin <laughs> circ- circle jerkular economy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, random other complaints like the zap button doesn't work. Uh, for some reason, we're following ourselves. Like why? It's, that has to be some sort of technical reason, right? I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's just to boost numbers. Yeah. Uh, searching for names doesn't work. And like, I know why this is like there because this is a decentralized protocol. There is no like you're at. Your 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 like the equivalent of your Twitter at your username is not global. Anybody can sign up, I think, for any username. So you can't search for usernames, especially if somebody is on a different like relay or not using Domus. I think Domus itself might have some sort of like at Domus like account. I'm not sure. It did have I definitely we could search, but the search didn't work. Like I yeah. tried looking up Denim, who's like my friend that is trying to get me to post on Noster. Mm-hmm. And I looked up Denim, which is his display name on yep. Noster, and it didn't pull yep. up any like you should be able yep. to see like the yep. the ten other denims yep. or whatever, right? Like a yep. uh, denim enjoyer who's yep. just posting blue jeans on yep. Noster, whatever it is, but it's like I should be able to see that. I mean that just seems like and I mean, now we're just kind of shitting on the app. It's but that's, like, but that's, but, but some of these are things which are inherent to the protocol. Yeah. This thing that usernames, they're not globally unique usernames. This is actually a massive fucking problem. Every platform that people actually use, every single messaging app, every single social media app, phone numbers, like the telephone system, email, uh, the World Wide web, which has like, uh, domain names all have a globally unique human readable directory of names that people can like type in and search. Well, what about Bitcoin? Uh, that's fine. Bitcoin doesn't need it because it's not a social media app. It's not yeah. any of these. I things mean, I think that's like, that's the argument I've heard is like, I'm like, I'm not giving people my end pub. Like, yeah, yeah. The I'm idea, not putting end pub. The idea blah, blah, that you're blah, blah, like blah, blah, posting your end pub on Twitter. The thing is, is that the only way for people to find you on Noster is for you to post your end pub on Twitter <laughs> so they can search your Twitter username and then add your Noster end pub. So like if you get kicked off of Twitter, you are simultaneously so getting kicked off of Noster. <laughs> like this kind of shit, like you can't have a system where people post NPUBs. You fucking can't. You can't do it. You literally can't do it. Like this is enough to kill Noster. Yeah. And also like, okay, so if somebody, I, I think actually this gives us a good um, segue into the next app, 
which is Farcaster. Which is like Noster, but for Ethereum. Which is kind of Noster for Ethereum people. But Farcaster does solve some of these problems. Um, in particular, because creating an account is like an on-chain action, um, they do have a globally unique directory of usernames because they're recorded on Ethereum and there's some sort of way that you like are not able to get the same name twice. So this means that just basic usability is way better. Um, for Farcaster, we used an app called Warpcaster, mm -hmm. which I've got to say is is as good as, if not better than the Twitter client. Like whereas, yeah. whereas Noster was like a slightly worse version of the Twitter client, which had a lot of weird paper cuts. Um, Farcaster is just better. Um, and it also didn't seem like a ghost town there. Like you not, go, there were a ton of people. That's, that's the other thing I think like, this is I think a bottom up critique that also like plays into the top down critique. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're thinking about user acquisition, you have to think about like the workflow from getting someone who doesn't know about what your platform is to mm -hmm. getting them to use your platform. Yeah. And like, part of that is like, when you sign up for an account, you should see something that makes you want to stay. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I will say like the difference between Noster and Farcaster for that was extreme. Yep. Noster, we just saw our own page. I, I right. I, yep. And like, Farcaster, you see instantly, you know, an algorithmically generated feed yep. of people that are actually posting things on Farcaster. I also think that this has a different, an interesting, this is due to a difference in the community of people that they're pulling from, which is that Noster is kind of pulling from Bitcoiners and Farcaster is pulling from Ethereum Web3 people. Mm -hmm. And I think Web3 and Ethereum are complete fucking bullshit and like absolute trash. But the reality is, is that these Web3 people, they fucking use Web3 all the time. Yeah. They have like a bunch of weird ass wallets. They have fucking MetaMask. They're used to dealing with all these like weird ass protocols. They'll sign up for like weird bullshit because it's like some Web3 bullshit. Then there's like hype around it. Bitcoiners don't actually use Bitcoin very much. They just like stack their sats into their cold storage and like they don't have some weird like web wallet browser plugin. They don't go like, oh, what's some weird Bitcoin app? Let me sign up for it because they don't need it. That's not like the use case of Bitcoin. And what is the use case of Bitcoin? Stacking fucking sats. Number getting, go get, up. Number go Literally up, getting fucking number rich. fucking go up. That's the use yeah. case of Bitcoin. <laughs> Anyways, but the, these Web3 people, they're, they're, they're dog fooding the shit all the time. And I think that probably is why we saw that level of use and engagement because like you're like Ethereum social media, next big thing, download my app. And Ethereum people are primed to see a tweet that says next big thing and then download an app, yeah. right? Whereas Bitcoin people are, are just not. Yeah. Also, Noster is not related to Bitcoin. Nothing in Noster has anything to do with Bitcoin. Um, there's no sort of on-chain anything. Um, there's no connection to your Bitcoin address. You just happen to use SecP256K1, the same elliptic curve as, as Bitcoin. That's the only sort of, it's like a loose cultural connection, not like a concrete connection. Do you think there's a benefit to building something like a decentralized social media platform <clears throat> on Bitcoin versus on Ethereum? No, not really. Because, because again, like the, the benefit of building it on Bitcoin would be censorship resistance, but we don't see the kind of censorship. We don't see social media censorship to the extent that like we care about. Yeah. I think actually that's like, an like, and also like if you, whereas, whereas Bitcoin, the core value prop of Bitcoin is this like decentralized currency. And that is actually something where you want to see censorship resistance it's actually something where when we've seen people create centralized alternative currencies in the past, like um, e-gold and uh, Liberty Reserve, those things were actually shut down by the government, right? Yeah. Whereas social media, there's all sorts of social media. Anybody can build their own social media app. So Bitcoin versus Ethereum, the benefit to Bitcoin is neutrality, censorship resistance, but social media doesn't suffer from these censorship problems. Like people do get censored on social media. I don't want to claim that they don't but they don't do it in such a scale that there would be enough people to actually move to this alternative platform. I mean, I think it, it could be possible, right? Like that's the insurance, like a uh, reason to use some sort of decentralized platform is like first they came for the right wing Nazi posters mm -hmm. and then they came for the e-girls posting their suggestive selfies. Yeah. You know and what I, I told mean? them make sure to get all the e-girls. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I guess it, it's not that social media censorship couldn't be a major issue that would drive people to Noster, Farcaster, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think like, honestly, Elon buying Twitter destroyed a lot of that value proposition. Absolutely. And I don't yeah. say that because I love Elon and think that he's like a 
hero for yeah. like, you know, Twitter the free is, speech people. Twitter is way less censored than it was in the past. And social media is a space where there's enough competition among social media platforms, like large social media platforms, that an individual large social media platform can take steps to make their platform less censored. And because of free speech protections in the US, uh, it will make a meaningful dent, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think also like, I mean, just bringing it back to the the Bitcoin <clears throat> value proposition as a comparison, it's like, if the government was doing a better job of managing inflation and its mm -hmm. own currency, yep. I don't think Bitcoin would have as much of a value no, prop, no, right? No, no. If, if the US government had a zero inflation or deflationary currency, there would be zero value. Well, I, there's still the censorship resistance. And I do think that, that in currency, in financial matters, there's enough censorship that it actually does benefit people to use Bitcoin. But yeah, if, if, if the, the U S government was like, there's going to be $21 million and not a, not a penny more, that would obliterate a huge amount of the value prop of Bitcoin. I mean, it obliterates the digital gold, like the thesis, number go up, right? Yeah. The number go up, yep. the store of value stuff, which yep. again, I think is like the number one value prop of Bitcoin and why most yep. people have it. So yeah, I mean, it's just like, I think it's not to say that social media couldn't get to a place where you do want these like, you know, decentralized platforms where you're not censored, but even in that case, okay, why, you know, censored money versus censored speech is a different mm -hmm. goal. So censored money, it's like, I want to pay you for something and the government mm -hmm. doesn't want me to pay you for it. I, you and I still want that money, mm -hmm. but like, what's the purpose of having like uncensored free speech? Why don't I just go on the corner of the street and yell all of my ideas because no one will listen. Yep. And it doesn't fucking matter what I, what I can or can't yell on the corner of the street if no one will listen because the purpose of communicating it is to get it out to people. Yep. And so like if the trade-off for these decentralized platforms is that you're still yelling into the void, but now you can yell into the void and you can see your own post, mm -hmm. but no one else sees your own fucking post, it doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter that you have that free speech. And yep. so I think it's like, again, I keep going back to like, why are people on social media in the first place? Like, why do we want free speech in the first place? Why do we, want? it's like, because you want to reach people because you want algorithmic reach. Yep. Like, get pissed off because like it's stealing your attention or whatever, but like your attention is, is valuable. And clearly you are willing to like give up your attention for access to this algorithm, you know? Indeed. Anyway, let's keep going. Yep. Is there anything else on Farcaster? I mean, Farcaster just, it, Farcaster it seemed was like better it worked than really well. It seemed, sure. it seemed like healthy. Like it seemed yeah. like there was, so I would put Farcaster in the same category as sort of like truth social in the sense that <laughs> it seems like it has like a large, dedicated user base and it works pretty well. Yeah. Never going to unseat Twitter, but yeah, works pretty well. Yeah. Um, next one is Urbit. Yeah. Next one is Urbit. Which so is a different thing. Different but. thing. Yeah. But it is, Urbit is very much coming at it. It's, it's value prop is very similar to Nostra. It's like, look, you should own your own computer and owning your own computer in the Urbit sense is also a lot about sort of owning your own social media apps that you like run on that computer. Right. Um, and Urbit's sort of main thing that it's trying to deliver forever has been that it's very easy to use. That has been sort of the Urbit claim. We want to make it easy to run a computer. Uh, running a Linux box in the cloud is like too hard. Uh, normal people can't do it. So we want to give you this solid state computer that you can run yourself. You can do all your social media. You can do everything on it. And the degree to which it fails to deliver that is, is insane. Uh, I've been following Urbit for a long time. I think there's been three times that I've tried to use Urbit. One like very early on, one sort of when some hosted Urbit services started running out, and one in this most recent sort of attempt like the to other use day. Urbit. Yeah, yeah, the other day. And it is so colossally bad on every dimension of usability I have no idea what these people think they're doing. Like if you are trying to make a platform that delivers X, and in this case, X is like usability and simplicity, but that X, that goal is always something that is going to come just in the next update, you know, and you see no evidence of X being accomplished in the current state of the system. Like, uh, bro, something's wrong. Like something's really, really wrong. Like you need to give it up. So like we went to, urbit.com or whatever the main page is. Um, we started looking at like how to, how to get started with urbit. The instructions are 
fucking insane. The instructions are absolutely fucking insane. And they're not just insane if you like know how to use computers. It's not like, oh, this is like the kind of setup that you would see for sort of like a normal social media project or open source project, sorry, open source project, like Ord, like getting started with Ord, right? You go to Ord, Ord is hard to set up, right? But Ord is hard to set up in a sort of normal way for normal projects where somebody who's like reasonably competent can do it easy, easily. Urbit is like fucking insane. Like just this deluge of like random fucking words that they made up. Um, so it's from the guy who made up a bunch of random fucking words that fucking stuck and are descriptive of the <laughs> things that they describe. Okay. They're good words. I mean, I, I do think the thing that Urbit actually did do quite well is like the aesthetic idea of what they were trying That's to right. do. Right. Yeah. It's like you, the words I think are fun. Like they may not work. They're incomprehensible. They may be incomprehensible, but, they but are, it is yeah. fun. It's fun. Every platform that we tried to like access Urbit through yeah, we couldn't click the buttons and have them do yeah, something, but they the did look like beautiful landing That's right. pages, That's you right. know, yeah. like I think yeah. they have like, they have the aesthetics and kind of like the right niche down. Yep. They just haven't filled in the, the technical stuff, any, which is what the promises thing. have been for the last 10 years or whatever. Yep. Right. And I think like maybe this also is just, I I've noticed like, you know, getting more into to building tech products, mm -hmm. it is very hard to find people who are technically minded and also have the style of brain where they can look at like the design and user interface of things and like make those two things work well together. I, I don't know exactly why. Maybe part of it is that like JavaScript sucks. This is hard. They're different skills. Yeah. Like uh, people who tend to do front end tend to like if you if you're a back end person, like you can get a great job doing back end programming and do this fun stuff and never have to care about this other UI stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that's like, I would say Urbit and Noster, maybe those are the only two I blue sky, probably similar. I think like the, the main issue for both of them is that like the, the user facing side is bad. Yep. It doesn't work. Yep. And to me, like that makes sense from the perspective of, oh, the people that are building on it are so ingrained in it that they don't really think from the perspective of someone who has no, like they, they can't put themselves in the brain of someone who has not used it before, doesn't know what it is yeah. and like is now learning to use yeah. it. I mean, urban people are effectively in a cult and they can't view things from the viewpoint of somebody who's not in that cult. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's the same with Bitcoin maxis, you know, like it's a similar thing. Oh yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. Like, and I would that's say why most that's why they think oh everybody that should that's why they think like oh people should use bitcoin for payments yeah. while ignoring the practical downsides. But even like, you know, I use like like Sparrow I think is a great bitcoin app in a mm -hmm. lot of ways, but like I use Sparrow and I look at it and I'm like what the fuck is going on and yep. like I try to send multiple, you know, let's say I have like a lineup of payments I need to make. Mm -hmm. I try to make new payments and like I don't realize that I'm doing, I'm selecting the same UTXOs for those mm -hmm. payments. So one of them works and one of them doesn't. Yeah. I don't understand why. Like, yeah. like I, I can understand looking back at it, but I'm just trying to go through as if I'm sending a bank payment, right? Yeah. And like that would never happen with a bank payment. Yeah. And so I do think like it's just, it's a common thing with these nerdy yeah. platforms where it's like the yeah. nerds are in too deep. They can't get themselves out of it. They probably just like need to hire like for someone with Urban like Urban is toast. Okay. Urban is Urban's fucking toast and the rot goes deep. <laughs> Urban has a different problem. I feel like Urban is a shitcoin let me, project that's a shitcoin me, project, which is a different thing. Yeah, let me let me just go through all the things that like did not work for Urban. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I actually had like three Urban planets that I've like acquired You're a whale. over the year. Yeah, I'm an Urban whale. I had three Urban planets with like passwords to them or master tickets in the like urbit parlance in my um, password manager, right? Mm -hmm. So I tried to get all three of these planets working with these like master tickets, right? I fucking couldn't. I, lo I logged into this thing called Bridge and I put in my master ticket and it was like, oh, this, this, this planet is not like valid for this thing. Um, the urbit command line binary would not just accept a master ticket as a uh, like, argument that you could give it. It wanted like some fucking key file, which is a different thing. Um, absolutely fucking insane because Urbit is supposed to be this like, it's your computer, it's your computer forever. Okay. And if I saved my fucking like, you know, font trip log like Urbit name, and I saved the thing that they called the master ticket that they told me would always let me get my planet. And then I try to run the Urbit binary and I can't boot my planet. 
Like that's fucking crazy. It's like the equivalent of putting your like seed phrase into a Bitcoin yeah. wallet. And it's like, what yeah. are you talking yeah, 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 about? Yeah, yeah, what are these yeah. random words? It's <laughs> fucking crazy that they would get this wrong. Like absolutely fucking crazy. Um, okay, great. So we can't boot a planet. So we tried to boot a comment. We needed to mine the comet. So it like pinned my like CPU for like two or three minutes, like mining this comet. Like, okay, fine. But a comet is still like a second class citizen. Like a comet is like a surf. A planet is like a real person. Um, on urbit.com, the link to all the hosting sites was dead. They had like two or three hosting options, all of which don't seem to be providing hosting anymore. Like, and this is on the get started with urbit page. You like search for urbit, you go to the first result, you go to get started and it gives you dead fucking links. So we couldn't, we couldn't run the hosting site. So I downloaded the urbit binary on one of the ordinals.com servers. That was, that's like a backup server. Um, I ran it. Okay. I ran the, ran the urbit binary after I ran the urbit binary. My terminal fucking broke. I could no longer type in my terminal. It did some fuck. It did some fucky like escape codes or stuff, st something to like stop echoing terminal output and broke my fucking terminal. This is fucking crazy. This is insane. This is like such like varsity league, like Bush league bullshit. Like you do not break the user's terminal. You don't fucking break the user's terminal. Like that's fucking crazy. Like the shit that you would have to do is fucking insane to break the user's terminal. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, this is, uh, okay. So you, you log into this fucking thing somehow after you like boot your fucking comment or whatever and you type help. Okay. And it doesn't work. Typing help doesn't work. It, it prints out some fucking inscrutable bullshit. You have to type plus help. Okay. And then it prints out a bunch of commands, but like none of them are useful because it's printing out all like 1000 commands that are available and not like some summary of the commands that are actually useful. So like fucking terrible. Um, then I started using the web interface uh, to try to like access it. Fucking terrible. Tried installing apps. They like hung. Apps didn't work. Added some groups. The groups were all like empty. Uh, like just garbage. Like just flat out total garbage. I will say of all these platforms that you tried though, I feel like you had the most fun trying. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was so, <laughs> it was so bad in so many ways. Like it was, it was like urban is like, we will do X. And then I got to click on it and be like, wow, they're not doing X. They're not doing X. Like yeah. they're not doing for, it was real. Like there was so much hater aid. Well, to and drink. I think no one cares about urban except us kind of like, and by us, I mean like maybe a group of a hundred people that live in yeah. the San Francisco Bay area yeah. or yeah. in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And I think like it's, it's maybe of all of these, like Nostra, I have the most like beef with like mm -hmm. i'm like i'm like inspired to like hate post on noster yeah. with how much beef which isn't you know they've created well, an incentive mechanism i, I there. think that this reflects our different styles of haterdom like mm. noster is bad from a big picture point of view right yeah and then urbit is bad from a million tiny paper cuts point of view yeah because so you love hating on uh <laughs> noster and i love hating on urbit yeah, yeah yeah it's true his and hers and i think like urbit it's like they're kind of just trying to be a small place for you to hang out with your friends. Mm -hmm. Like that's what they're trying to provide. Yeah. They're not really, they're maybe, they're maybe going for replacing something like Facebook groups. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, they're, they're trying to create, okay, you have your, your, <clears throat> or, or like a subreddit yeah. or something where it's like, like, I don't think a subreddit necessarily like is trying that much with algorithmic reach, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just want to have your community of people that are into the thing that you're into. And then you yeah. all post about that thing. Yeah. I feel like that's what Urbit's trying to go for. Yep. Yeah. And it's a shame, honestly, that they haven't accomplished that because I do think they have the right niche to do it. Yep. You yep. know, like and they also have the aesthetics, which is hard. They have the aesthetics. It's they have the right. It's not easy to have really great aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe someone needs to go in there and let's see if there's anything else. Things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the log spew is insane. Um, and then also like under the hood, things that users shouldn't necessarily have to care about. Urbit uses this language called Hoon. Um, Hoon is a functional programming language. And the entire reason that Hoon exists is because people, because of all the purported benefits of functional programming language languages. Now, in reality, nobody uses these, nobody uses functional programming languages in the real world. And these benefits are immaterial if nobody uses them. And the reason that nobody uses them is because they're slow, they're really slow, and um, they don't kind of line up with how people think. People kind of think imperatively, like you do step one, you do step two, instead of like, People see a bicycle going down the street and they think of it as the same bicycle moving from point A to point B, whereas a functional language would have them believe that actually it's like a new bicycle, 
Like the bicycle is being destroyed every time it moves and a new bicycle is created in its new position. And that's Sounds simply- Sounds like a BRC-20 tra- <laughs> <That's right. laughs> transfer. Yeah, yeah. But nobody, no, that's like a runes transfer. You got to destroy the bicycle sorry, to create sorry, a new yeah, bicycle. Right. Yeah. And that's just not how people think. Like, sorry, um, Hoon itself is a bad functional programming language. It's fucking insane. Nobody can learn it. Uh, the names are terrible. Like the Urbit names are fucking terrible. All the variable names are terrible. Like you look at their code base and you're like, I literally have no idea what's going on. I literally would have to learn a new language to even begin to start understanding this, this code base. Um, if I, if, if you could go back in time and you wanted to fix Urbit, um, I think that you could. Yeah. And I think that the way that you would do it is you would be like, look, Urbit is going to be written in normal Rust using normal Rust, using normal computer stuff, right? We're going to use normal serialization formats like Seabor. We're going to use a normal programming language like Rust. Instead of using NOC, our execution environment is going to be WASM. Um, WASM is fine. WASM is fast. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're going to make everything under the hood be as normal as possible. They literally would have been able to get probably 10 to a hundred times as much done in terms of practically delivering like a good user experience than they have instead of going down this infinite rabbit hole of like rebuilding everything from scratch. Um, and I do actually think that the Urbit model would have a chance like this, like, you know, okay, you have this, there, there's some things that I think are hard. Um, like for example, I don't think that there should be, well, let me not get into the technical details, but anyways, if you just made it really normal underneath. So normal people can understand it and it used normal things instead of a bunch of bullshit. And, and also like, listen, like urban people will tell you that all these weird things that they use have benefits like, Oh, like we use knock as the execution environment because we can freeze it and it can be in like one state forever. Right. And Oh, we use Hoon because it's this like functional programming language. And Oh, we also use Hoon because we want it to be weird. We want to like jolt people out of there, like whatever we use our weird like serialization format because of like weird reasons for like weird benefits to eventually provide the solid state computer. Like, look guys, it's not fucking working. It's not fucking working. None of the benefits are materializing. None of the benefits have ever materialized. Like it's (laughs) anyways, (laughs) he's going to die. (laughs) I'm going to fucking die. (laughs) Like you could have just used normal tech under the hood and then hired a lot of designers and cultivated this amazing aesthetic while letting the programmers just program essentially just like a WASM execution environment where you could send WASM binary apps over the network and like this sort of name system where you can like connect to other people. That would have been fine. Yeah. That would have been fine. It is. It's a shame because I think similar to Farcaster, Urbit kind of captured this group of people that, that probably would have been really down to, to use it, even if they weren't seeing a lot of immediate benefit from the get go because they want, this type of thing to exist. Mm -hmm. And I think like, yeah, this, this critique, it comes from a place of like love for me in the sense that like, I do love the, the weirdos that are trying to do this type of shit. Mm -hmm. But also I think it does speak to like, there was maybe this like movement in 2020 where it was like all these, these creators that were, you know, not going along with the woke thing they had this genuine feeling of like, oh shit, I probably need to start building something somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not, you know, a literal Nazi on the internet, like I'm seeing doctors be censored for posting things that aren't in line with the like Mm -hmm. world health organization guidelines that don't make any sense. If they're getting banned, if they're getting whatever, then I need, that could lead to me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Urbit, Farcaster, Noster, all these, all these like things, true social as well, obviously, like they, they had that moment that I just think is not as strong anymore. And that's just, sometimes that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, I feel like even if something like Urbit had been able to deliver in 2020 on, on what it was trying to do for many years before 2020, I wonder if we would see these platforms being successful even regardless, just, I don't think you know so. what I mean? Like, it's yeah, like, when I, when I, my success case for Urbit is actually a very niche kind of success that it has like. A, a small number, I mean, a large number worldwide, but relatively small compared to primary dominant social media networks, yeah. but that it does have like an active community that is like growing and is never going to go away. Yeah. And I, I would have been like, I, I would be on there because I do like the planet, comet, yep. galaxy bullshit. Yep. You know, if, I'm and, into that. and if Urbit had a sane development environment for me as a developer, it's actually a pretty appealing 
thing. If I could be yeah. like, look, I can write some Rust and implement these very simple like apps that can then be like downloaded over the network by anybody. And I can run them <clears throat> in sort of this like nice way where like, I don't have to boot up a whole Linux server. I, I would be into that. Right. I'd be into that. I maybe would be a niche user of, of Urbit. Maybe your next, uh, your next project should be your own Urbit. My own Urbit. Yeah. Fork Urbit. I've thought about it a few times. I've thought about it a few times, but it's just such a gargantuan, gargantuan amount of, of work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, life is long. Yep. Um, Let's move on. Truth Social. Truth Social. This was the one I had the most fun on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron this, was had a blast. I enjoyed Truth Social. Ads I, for Ivermectin everywhere. The only, ads, <laughs> the only ads that I got on Truth Social were for Ivermectin, which is crazy because, so it's not like it's Ivermectin advertising for itself. Because That's right. Ivermectin is like a generic. Generic. Yeah. yeah anyone can make Ivermectin. There's yeah, no copyright, like Tylenol. whatever on it. It's for some like familydoctors.com yeah, that's yeah, selling yeah. Ivermectin. Yeah. And it's just like. It's like, it, I mean, it's achieving its perfect target. So in that way, it's like, okay, there's, there's obviously a thing here that's being captured. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, I'm going on truth social. I'm getting my ivermectin ads and Patriot God lover, you know, yep. 4,000 is like posting <laughs> yeah. every day. Right. Yep. It was interesting. Truth social felt like Facebook. Right. Um, it was, it was a feed like Twitter, but it's a boomer network. It's, it's a, a boomer, boomer network. network. It's a boomer network. And like, the big thing, at least that they were trying to push on me as like a new user when I made the account was groups, which mm -hmm. is similar to Facebook. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think that's actually kind of the big appeal of Facebook at this point is yeah. like there's Facebook groups like, uh, you know, Bay Area buy nothing where mm -hmm. you can post free shit and people like exchange stuff on there. Like yeah. that's something that like Craigslist next door or whatever. There's different alternative platforms. I don't think you can really call them an alt. It's, it's just a platform that exists for a specific purpose. But yeah. like I feel like Facebook groups is is kind of like the the best version of those things because the idea is that you already have a Facebook account that people can kind of verify you're a real person with because mm -hmm. if you're doing things like going and picking up a couch from someone you kind of want to feel like it's a real person. Yep. I would go to a Craigslist ad and pick up a couch, but there's a lot of people who won't, right? Yep. So like Truth Social sort of had that feel of Facebook where it had all these groups like gardening, dog photos, whatever, where mm -hmm. it's like you can kind of join a group for your special interest and you have your truth social profile that kind of like cross verifies with that, that you're like a person. And then people feel it, it, it felt more like, like what I was saying before about Facebook being a place where you're hanging out with your friends. Mm -hmm. That felt more like the purpose of truth social is that yep. like truth social is where the, the MAGA Trumpers <clears throat> who, when they post their MAGA Trump content on Facebook, get flamed by their non-binary nephew they can go to truth social and they don't have to put up with that shit. Yep. That's the use case of truth social. And it was kind of awesome. <laughs> you also got some gardening content too. Yeah, I got gardening content, dog content. Um, dog content. Like there's no reason for me to be on truth social. Like literally I'm not a boomer, right? Like I don't use Facebook, but I could understand why like a MAGA boomer would want to be on truth social because they don't want to put up with their liberal mm -hmm. like family yep. members on Facebook. So yep. they're just going to truth social. Yep. That said though, there were hate comments on Trump's posts. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And also uh, Kamala Harris. Yeah, has... wait, wait. And that's like, so, so when you join truth social, you know, it's the same thing as Twitter where you join and then it, it makes you follow a couple of accounts mm -hmm. before you can like continue. Yep. So on Twitter, if you join like the top thing is follow Elon. And then it's like, follow like Trump or what, you know, it's like other famous people, but it's definitely like follow Elon every time is at the top. Yep. Obviously for truth social, it's follow Trump is the top thing. It's like yep. you get on truth social, follow Trump is the first like option. The second option was following Kamala, Kamala HQ, HQ, which is actually it like was some a real sort of account. Kamala pro Kamala account. It's a real account. It's yep. it, cause there's Kamala HQ on and Twitter. It, it makes too. sense that they would want to go to where their enemy is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, good on them for signing up for a truth, truth social. And account. honestly crazy for truth social to suggest them as yeah. the number two. Follow. Good for them. It was like, it was Trump was number one, then Kamala HQ, which isn't Kamala because Kamala is not a real person. She's just like a voice for, you know, the faceless oligarchy, mm -hmm. right? So yep. it's Kamala HQ, not Kamala Harris. And then JD Vance and then Tucker Carlson. So it's kind of like after Trump and Kamala at the top, it's it's like the suspected cast of right wing characters that like mm -hmm. would be, they're probably active on Truth Social and that's why they're up there, right? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it was kind of crazy to see Kamala HQ on there being suggested. They regularly post and they post the same content that they post on Twitter. And if you go to Trump's posts on truth social, there are people being like, you're a liar. Yeah. yeah. Like on his post. Yeah. Like it's pretty, it, it, it feels like Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's just Facebook, but like for the MAGA moms. Yep. But like, 
yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's kind of funny. Like, I feel like, I mean, truth social is, is sort of like the definition of the, of, of this list. I feel like truth social has the most like top down appeal in the mm-hmm. sense that like you have the biggest brand in the entire world, which is Trump mm-hmm. like behind it. Uh, obviously I don't think truth social has really like succeeded in the sense of like, who uses no, true social, yeah. whatever. Like I'm not really arguing anyone should join <laughs> true social versus any of these platforms that we're reviewing, but like you have kind of like the biggest brand in the world that did actually get banned from Twitter. And yep. so actually did get deplatformed and had nowhere and not just Twitter everywhere. Right. Yep. Like true social was the only place for him to talk to his audience. And so it was like an obvious reason for people to join. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of had like the best UI of every platform that we tried. I thought that Farcaster had a better UI. I thought that for me, Farcaster had the well, best Well, you're UI. not a boomer, but like <laughs> true social works. It does. It like, does. you know what yeah. I mean? Like it has like a good onboarding flow. Like yep. it has groups that are active. It mm-hmm. like asks you for your interests and then tries to direct you to your interests. Like yep. it was, I mean, whoever built truth social did like actually a pretty good job with yep. it. So, so maybe get on truth social. Get on truth social. Uh, <laughs> I guess, are we going to, I guess we're, we have to post our episode on all these yeah, platforms. We so to. we're going to yeah. then post this episode on truth social. Yep. Uh, last platform is Blue Sky, which was a sort of explicitly created to be an open source protocol that like competes with Twitter. Uh, yeah, we were trying to find like uh, kind of like a left wing version of this. Yeah, you know, because like alternative social Mast- media is right wing coded. Yeah, it's actually Mastodon and Blue Sky that are like the left wing versions of Twitter. Yeah, so yeah. we kind of wanted we didn't end up doing Mastodon, but like that was sort of the idea yeah. a little bit with this. Is like okay, we have all these kind of like right wing adjacent alternative social media yeah. platforms, but the thing is the left doesn't. Need, again, it's it's the top down use case. It's like the left doesn't need an alternative social no. media platform. No, so they why can would go they on care? threads or whatever. Yeah, like, it's no problem. They can go on TikTok. Like they're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Sky. Um, it looks exactly like Mastodon. It appears to replicate exactly Mastodon's functionality. I don't get why it's not Mastodon. I've used Mastodon in the pl- past. Uh, the main app, the uh, URL is bsky.app which is a terrible URL. Yeah. Usually if you go for a dot app or like dot some shitty bullshit TLD, it's so that you can get the name that you want. Right. <clears throat> but shitty name dot shitty TLD B sky dot app is fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. It, it, it should be blue sky dot app or B dot app. Probably just blue sky dot app. There's yeah, no reason for it to be B sky dot app. And it's like a shitty Twitter clone, you know, with, yeah. with a bunch of commies posting some stupid commie memes, like fucking whatever. But yeah, I think for them, it's like they just have no reason. <clears throat> yep. They, they Blue, can Blue do Sky, whatever anywhere. Blue Sky is kind of fucked because they got a lot of money and a lot of investment and like grants and stuff. And that shit is going to run out. And then they are going to like just go straight into the toilet. I don't I don't remember like. I, I remember, they don't have the they don't have the ivermectin ads to keep them going. They don't have that. That's what I'm saying. True social. It's like, yeah, if you're going to be putting your ad, if you are a website that's trying to sell ivermectin, like you probably can't advertise on Instagram. Like they probably won't no. let you. No. So you have to go advertise to your target audience on true social. Yeah, that's right. It did make me. I was like, oh, I can buy ivermectin. I didn't even really know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I don't remember like when did Blue Sky kind of come out? I, because I, feel like I remember, was, I feel like it was three years ago, three or four years ago. I think it's I, a little bit longer than that because I feel like okay. the time vortex, like that's yeah. like since COVID. Yeah, but I think it was they actually hired. Or um, during, I forget what her name is. They they hired one of the one of the main Zcash devs to mm. work on it. Yeah, because I remember when it first came out, like I had a bunch of like techie type friends that had like invite codes, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Oh, like do you want to try this with me?" And I feel like it was kind of. It was kind of the <clears throat> libtard version of like, yeah, come to Gab or Noster or whatever, where they just were sort of like putting in their best effort. Yeah. But I don't really remember why they would have cared. Like at that time, you know what I mean? Cause yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like there had to have been some sort of reason why people were like, we need this. Yeah. Maybe it was just like misinformation online. Like yeah, they were like, could be, you know, we need a different place where there's yeah. not so much misinformation, but I don't know. I don't know what the narrative would be from like the left perspective of having alternative Who social knows media. What those fucking commies think, bro. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we, we went through them all, went through them all. That's I mean, it. which was your fave? Like if you had to, oh, be I, the, I had the user, most fun on Urbit. I, I had the most say, fun being of, like, what the fuck is this bullshit? This is the worst shit I've ever I used. I feel like you could be an Urbit power user. No, no, it's too bad. It's too bad. And it doesn't do anything that I want. And it's incredibly hostile to, to developers. It's actively hostile. Towards you say developers. that, but you were having fun. No, if I was going to get on <laughs> anything, I would be on, 
I guess I'd be on Farcaster. Yeah. Like, why not? Just Web3 post, you know? Yeah, you could just Web3. Well, yeah. I feel like in all cases, whether you're on Urban or Farcaster, you'd just be the hater. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, I actually so don't really, really like that. hating. Like, no, if you look really at my like Twitter that. content, I try to, I don't, I try to not post hateful things all the time. Even no, you're I, not. Even though I want to. I don't know if you even want to, though. Yeah, you're I not. do. I love, I love complaining about shit. And sometimes I'll have like a snarky, mean tweet. Yeah, but I feel like for the most part, you like tweeting about like sumo or whatever thing you're it's like true. consuming, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you maybe should be on Truth Social in a very specific group. That's right. You know, yeah. that might be, I, I mean, I feel like definitely- you're just, You these, just want us both to be on Truth Social. Yeah, we're both just going to be on Truth Social. I mean, Truth Social, I feel like that's obviously the one I had the most fun on. It was the best platform. Like mm -hmm. just truly as a user, it was easily, maybe Farcaster was as good, but like, Farcaster, you also have to pay five dollars to sign up, so that's right. that's an yeah. instant. But it is it is it is it is like that's an example of solving things in the non Bitcoin way, right? The Bitcoin app would require you to like fund your Bitcoin wallet or whatever. Farcaster is like, look, pay us far five dollars through Apple Pay, and we'll do the heinous the on chain on chain stuff. Ethereum transaction that needs to happen. But see, I would rather trade my attention in exchange for an ivermectin mm -hmm. ad yep. than pay five dollars to use the platform. True. and I yep. think most people agree with me, even if you say you don't. Yeah. Sorry. There we go. Um, but yeah, so we'll post this everywhere. So, you know, I'm curious to see. We yeah. probably will get literally zero engagement. I don't even know engagement. if we'll post on, post on Urbit. Like my, we, we I don't know if we can. We shut down the machine that it was running on. You can't get that shit I, running back up. I couldn't even get a real planet. Like, yeah. Can and listen, I'm an expert computer user and programmer, <laughs> and I could not fucking get it done. <laughs> can you post videos on Urbit? Oh, no. Oh, well, I mean, there are such huge problems with doing that. Like, I mean, you would bring the network to its knees if you tried to post it. <laughs> That's what I was saying, because also some of these, I'm not like a fully convinced with all of these that like I could post a one hour episode. Urbit, no, definitely not. Okay, so we'll yeah. see what we can even do. I think we're probably, I, video is expensive, so I wouldn't be surprised if all of these things we had to just post links to our, our content. Well, maybe on True Social. I, I wonder. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, in any case, um, we had fun. Yep. Uh, so tell us in our comments why we're wrong about this Please. or that. Yeah. I would love to be told I'm wrong about some of these. Um, except Noster, I'm going to get triggered. I've yeah. had too many arguments. Yeah, like, right. yeah, I'm yeah. too fired up. I got myself so angry that, like, I had to, like, say, like, no, I can't. I'm not allowed to talk about Noster for the rest of the day. Yeah. Like, it got to that point where, like, anything that would happen, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, this is just like Noster. And like then I'd, like, launch myself back into an argument. Yeah. This could have been an email. Yeah. That's my review of Noster. Yep. Like it's yeah, but we will be posting this. Yep. We will so be posting this. Prove us wrong. Yep. So thanks everybody for and joining especially us. Our patrons. Especially Thank our patrons. Especially our patrons. Should we start doing the thing where we list our patrons? No, that seems crazy. I think people like that. They like getting the credit. They like going. Well, like, tell oh, us, look. do you like that? Do you want us to put. Yeah. Should we start listing our patrons at the end and doing a shout out to like, oh, Bob, like Bob's in the mythic tier. Like go Bob. I just feel like we're doxing people if we do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah that's us, why I wouldn't want to do it. But. Tell, tell us what you want. Tell us what you want, and then that will decide for everyone else. That's right. Yep. <laughs> cool. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. See you next and, time. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye. Later.